Hey guys, Ernie here and welcome to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Solid fuel is nothing new. Uh, we've looked at Esbit stoves before here on the channel. We've also looked at a UST stove from Walmart and used their solid fuel. Well, recently I was sent some new solid fuel by Expedition Research. This is the same company that I've done reviews on for the Bushcraft grate or cooking grill and also the Expedition kettle, which I did not long ago here on the channel. They've just introduced a new solid fuel they're calling Expedition Fuel. We're gonna take a good look at it. We're gonna compare it to Esbit fuel and that UST fuel and see how it compares. Stay tuned and we'll check it out. Thanks for watching. Solid fuel is something that has been around for a long, long time. Old military trihexamine tablets, uh, these are things that you can easily set fire. They're shelf stable, you can carry them with you and they can produce a nice flame and you can boil water or do whatever you need to do uh, anywhere out in the field. Like I said earlier, I've used several types, just the classic Esbit stoves. Um, we, we looked at this compact folding stove. I'll put a link up here for you guys on that for the ultimate survival technology folding stove from Walmart. It comes with its own fuel as well. And recently, the owner of Expedition Research sent me these new solid fuel tablets and he asked me to take a look at them. So we're going to take a look at them today. I've burnt two off already. I think they burn really nice. I thought, well, how do they compare to some of these other common solid fuels? So let's take a look at the actual packaging, tell you a little bit about it. Then we're going to take a look at each of the different fuels. We're going to see how long they burn and see if one can boil two cups of water. So this is the fuel. It comes in packs of four. These are 14 grams of smokeless hexamine fuel tablets. We'll take a look at the storage tray. The storage tray is submersible. It's waterproof, okay? It says that they will burn for 15 minutes. Each of these will burn for 15 minutes. They have a 100 year shelf life, which is pretty impressive. Smokeless and ashless, which is very nice when using indoors. Box says that it will burn at 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're gonna compare that with this, which is your typical Esbit cube. And lastly, we'll take a look at one of these. This is a fuel tablet that came with that ultimate survival technologies folding emergency stove. They are all a little bit different in size, so we'll see how that affects how long they burn. All right, so this is our setup. We're gonna use the classic Esbit stove here. This is the ultimate survival technologies fuel. All right, I'm gonna start it up. So we're gonna start our timer as far as how long it stays lit and we'll put on our water. And we're gonna see how long it takes for this to happen. So in about a minute, 10 seconds, we really have a full ignition of the entire cube. So that's not too bad. We'll see how that compares to the other two. So we're at 12 minutes. I would say that this is boiling. It is not a rolling boil by any means. I'm not sure that we're gonna to get to a rolling boil because this cube is starting to die. If it went the full 18 minutes that it claims on the website, we would definitely have a boil, but it's starting to die too much. So. Uh, we'll call it 12 minutes for a moderate boil, uh, not a rolling boil, but a moderate boil, and we'll see how much longer it burns. It's not creating any significant amount of heat, so we're going to call it at 16 minutes. Next, we're going to try out the Esbit. So this is the Esbit. Let's get it started. All right, it is lit. We'll start it the way we did last time, and we will put on our water. All right, we have basically a fully lit cube and it is just about 30, 35 seconds, so faster than the UST. Other thing we'll note right away, and we'll see if this changes, but it seems that the flames are going more directly up and not spreading out as much. That might be because the cube itself is a little smaller, so the flame won't um, spread out as much. And that may make the heat, the intensity of the heat on the bottom of the pot much better. So let's see how long it takes for this to boil. There's no question whatsoever that that initial hypothesis as far as the flame being more directly on the bottom of the pot is definitely true. Uh, we'll see if that makes a difference in the boil time. So we're coming up on nine minutes. This is really basically the same level of boil that we got from the UST tablet. So quite a bit faster, three minutes t faster. Again, still not a rolling boil. We're going to leave it on there and see if we achieve that true good rolling boil, but nine minutes for a boil time. So once again, guys, we're at 10 minutes, 30 seconds. Uh, we're starting to lose flame. We are definitely boiling, but it is not a good, strong rolling boil that you might get with, say, for example, a canister stove or something like that. It is boiling. I'm comfortable with that, but it is not by any means that strong rolling boil. Let's see how much longer it burns before it dies out. So once again, we're at a really small amount of burn here. I think we're gonna call this right about 12 minutes, 20 seconds. 
uh, even though we're still getting a little bit of flame, it is not producing enough heat to even burn my hand that close. So we're gonna go ahead and call it 12 minutes, 20 seconds for the Esbit. So last but not least, new kit on the block here, which is the Expedition Research Expedition Fuel. Let's get it lit. There it is lit. We're gonna start this, put our water on, and let's see what happens. Okay, about 50 seconds and we're fully lit here for the most part. And now we'll see how long it takes for this to boil. In a similar fashion to the Esbit, it seems like most of the flame is on the um, actual bottom of the pot as opposed to kind of flying around some with the ultimate survival technology one. Again, I think that's due to the dimensions of the actual fuel tablet. All right, once again, we're coming up on, basically I'll call this a boil, uh, nine minutes. I don't remember what the last one was. This is about nine minutes for a nice steady boil. Uh, once again, not a rolling boil. We're going to keep this going uh, before it dies down and see if we do get to that really strong rolling boil. We have not achieved that with either of the prior two stoves. I'm not sure this will achieve it either. I'm just not sure that it creates enough heat to get a strong rolling boil. But we are at a boil, nine minutes. Guys, it's a small flame, 13 minutes, but it's still, it's still hot, so I'm going to keep it going just a little longer until the heat won't burn my hand. That's pretty close. We're going to call it 14 minutes and that little bit of burning there is not very effective. So 14 minutes total burn time. So there's a look at those three different types of fuels. Let's look at each one individually and see what we can make of it. So first we're going to look at the USC or the Ultimate Survival Technologies statistics for its cube. Price right now you can get eight of them for seven dollars. That's about 87 cents each looking at the individual cubes themselves. Claims a burn time of 18 minutes and it burned to 60 minutes which isn't too bad but it took a while to get to a boil at 12 minutes. I cannot find anywhere on the internet a shelf life for these particular items. I imagine it's a pretty good shelf life, but it doesn't say anything compared to the other ones that do give a specific shelf life. As far as the Esbit goes, you can get 12 of those for $10. That's about 83 cents for each cube. Claims a burn time of 12 minutes, and it did go just over 12 minutes and brought two cups of water to a boil in nine minutes. Now it says it has a shelf life of just about 10 years, which is pretty good. Lastly is the new kit on the block, which is the Expedition Research Expedition Fuel. You can get as few as four of these for $2.79. That's 69 cents each, by far the cheapest of any of these. I think if you buy them in a bulk, you can even get them cheaper. They claim to burn for 15 minutes. I got mine to burn effectively for 14 minutes. It probably would have burned for 15 minutes, but I don't really know that that last minute counts. I did the same for each, so it was fair. That last minute is just a little bit of flame and not really producing any heat to help in boiling. Boil time was nine minutes, which is essentially the same as the Esbit. So what do we think about this new fuel? Well, I think it's actually a little better than the Esbit for a couple of reasons. First of all, it did burn for a little bit longer, legitimately burnt for about two minutes longer. It was the same as far as boil time, which is great. Now, a couple of things that I think take this over the edge. First, it is cheapest, 69 cents each. If you're buying in bulk, I think you can get it cheaper. Another thing, this has a 100 year shelf life. Now, I don't know how they figured that out because they haven't had these around for 100 years. I wouldn't be surprised if the Esbit and the other lasted longer, but I'm just going by what the claims are and I expect I hope that the claims made by companies these days are true. The packaging is better. This is a very well sealed, waterproof packaging. The other two are not by any means. That does two things. First of all, you can store this anywhere. I don't smell the fishiness. It does smell fishy like all the other hexamine tablets, okay? This one smells less fishy even when opened and it absolutely has no scent if it's inside of the container. And that's really nice because I usually have to put those solid fuel tablets into a Ziploc and then put them into my bug out bag or wherever it might be. So less scent is nice. So in review, why do I think this is better? Well, it's cheaper. It has a longer shelf life. It has better packaging. And lastly, it actually kind of looks nice. It's, it's the smoothest finish. Doesn't make any difference at all, but I might as well point it out. So that's it for another episode of Paleo Hiker MD. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really like this company, Expedition Research. Owner is very, very nice. And I always pull for smaller companies here in the United States because I think if we can support those smaller companies, allow them to develop better uh, product lines, hopefully at a good price and high quality, they will help all of us long term. So, do you like the video? If you do, please give it a thumbs up down below. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of my videos, hit that little bell down there. You'll always be notified of new videos from the channel. Not everybody is uh, notified whenever all the YouTubers let out a new video. So, if you want to make sure you get notified, hit that bell. Lastly, if you like the channel, please give it a subscription. It helps a lot to get uh, subscribers. It helps you know spread things through YouTube, getting very close to 10,000 subscribers, which is pretty exciting. 
and I'm planning a pretty awesome giveaway, hopefully, when I get there. Not sure when that'll be, but you'll hear details about the giveaway when it comes closer. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you guys enjoy these types of videos. I love testing out gear and seeing how it compares. I think this particular brand of product compared very nicely to the older standards and the things that we've used in the past. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos here on Paleo Hiker MD.